The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of Owen TV's management, staff, or board of directors. It's intercepted by Sabre still. Mikey Sabre still has a couple of blockers. A convoy. Michigan. Set up inside the turn. Mikey Sabre still. Biggest play of this defense tonight. You got to get in the water to compete. Then there's a number of teams, they are in the shallows. You just got to get a hold of them, though. If you can just get a hold of them and you start dragging their ass out to the deep, dark abyss, you can drown them. Because we'll tread water as long as it takes to fucking bury you. All I think about is you guys. That's all I think about, man. That's all I you think about is you guys. I just need you to trust me, that's all. Please. Picked up by the Lions, intercepted, coming back the other way. Ifatu Malafanwu, this is gonna be over. Lions are gonna win it. Lions are bringing the NFC North title back to Detroit. And it's been 30 years, 30 years. It's special, man. And these guys have been fucking dying for it and waiting for it, man. It's for you, baby. I feel like I wanna get up out of my chair. I'm ready to play. I'm ready to go. <laughs> Alrighty, and welcome into Views from the Sidelines. I'm How do we George. switch intros after that? <laughs> How do? <laughs> well, it has to be shorter, that's for sure. Well, maybe. But that's the problem. That's I, I got the hairs up on my I arm. I know, that's what I was wow. thinking. I was uh, working job, hard sir. on that. That's, that's incredible. And now I can't hear in my headphones. Um, but yeah, this is Views from the Sidelines. we got a lot of big topics to talk about. I'm Joey Tyson. That's, that's Malik Hill. Joey Tyson. I'm too, <laughs> I'm too amped up for this yeah. weekend. Uh, I've been talking about it all week. Uh, Lions have a playoff game. Michigan won a national championship for the first time since 1997. Malik, how old were you in 1997? It's funny you asked. After the game, I called my uncle, who basically like indoctrinated me into being a Michigan fan. Oh, oh man. Oh, but, sorry. <laughs> Is that yours? Okay, I found mine. And sorry. yeah, like starting at age like 10 and 11. My mom used to take me over to his house to watch football like every Saturday. Mm. And I'd just spend the day with him and his three TVs just going back and forth. And he said uh, he propped me up on the couch when I was barely a year old. I was born in uh, 1996, (laughs) April 1996. He said he propped me up on the couch during the game. Mm -hmm. And I apparently watched it. Obviously no memory. Yeah. But – it's unbelievable. It's it's unbelievable. I literally had – I'd lost hope. Like, I, I figured that they would get over the hump of Ohio State eventually. Mm-hmm. But I didn't think the recruiting would be enough. I didn't think the offensive system would be good enough. I I thought you had to be like the early, like, 2010s, late 2000s Alabama teams mm-hmm. where the talent is just so high level – that you can just straight up out physical and just play a vanilla brand of football. But he, but because you have those high level playmakers like the Mark Ingrams, Julio Joneses, you can go on and on and on. Mm-hmm. You can play a basic offense and still dominate. And somehow Michigan, they did it. I mean, Jim Harbaugh after 2020, he switched up the coaching staff. He got younger Everything just everything started to come together. They recruited the right players, mm-hmm. and it all came together for for just one special season. Blake Corum came back. And... Yeah, all the Trevor Keegan, Blake Corum, mm-hmm. Mike Saint, everybody that could have left right in the draft last year came back. And from the beginning of the season, from the media days, they all said we came back to win a championship. Mm-hmm. And. Blake Corum said in the post game, "Business is finished." I mean, mm-hmm. fifteen and zero. Yep, they did it. It's it's unbelievable. Yeah, they actually did it. Now the real question is, can they do it again? We'll get there <laughs> at a later date. We're just gonna enjoy when it when we when we look at one of like the most difficult schedules. Yeah, in Michigan football history, we'll mm-hmm. get to that at a later time. <laughs> but for now, I just gotta. I'm just soaking this in. 
Yeah. And still trying to wrap my head around the fact that they won a national championship. Yeah. They made yeah. the best quarterback in college football look lost. And we were kind of sure that that might have happened, but there's always that thought in the back of your mind that, you know, Michael Penix could carve that defense up. But Michigan's defense set up, um, stepped up. They threw everything at them. And honestly, it should have been a bigger margin of victory, even though it was 34-13. It could have been crazy. When They went up to 17-3, and everybody at that moment assumed it was a blowout waiting to happen. Yeah. And uh, Michigan kind of slowed down a little bit in, like, the third quarter and stuff. It was very similar to the third quarter from the Rose Bowl. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Um, The Cheaters won once again. (laughs) Houston Astros of college football. (laughs) Listen, man, Connor Stallions, give him the ring. Nobody else deserves it. I mean, the NCAA, it's it's hilarious that all these wins are going to be vacated, isn't it? Classless. This season just this season won't matter. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. The NCAA Incredible. is a proud organization. All right. Listen, man. Kansas will never be. They'll never get in trouble for anything. Yeah. Bill Self has two national championships. Cheating and looking for like the upper hand has been a part of sports in general, but especially college sports from the beginning of time. Yeah. People are acting all high and mighty and brand new like this is Mm -hmm. like this is (laughs) something just insane. Yeah. And people are it it blows my mind. It really does. Mm -hmm. I mean, for years, people called out Reggie Bush for being a terrible person. And now everybody's like, let's give him his Heisman back. I saw somebody on Twitter after the game say this Michigan National Championship is on the same level as Reggie Bush's Heisman. Mm -hmm. I mean. Sure, Reggie Bush should have his Heisman. <laughs> right. At this point, if you think Reggie Bush shouldn't have his Heisman, mm-hmm. you're just like an angry, I I don't know, man. Yeah. You're no fun. <laughs> Reggie Bush should have his Heisman. Yeah. It's ridiculous that it got taken away. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the, we talked about it before. Like, it doesn't really bother me. I don't think it mattered in the long run. Um, I just think it's funny to, to talk about um, at this point. But, um. Yeah, I mean, Michigan now most likely going to lose JJ. He could come back. A lot of pe- there's something some people that are starting to say maybe he should come back. Um and then Blake Horn's obviously gone. You can get Donovan Edwards for another year potentially. He also might leave after yeah. that performance in the national championship. Right. Sometimes But he had a somewhat of a rough season, so mm-hmm. yeah. Um most likely going to lose your coach, but uh when he was suspended, it didn't seem like it really mattered. At so. this point, I'm not sure if it's most likely. Yeah. To be honest. Okay. I I I have no idea what it's gonna be, mm-hmm. but I'm not like swayed to either side totally at this point. Okay. All right. Um. But yeah, that wraps up the the college football season. Your mm-hmm. miraculous <laughs> college football season. You didn't give any thoughts on like what happened in the game. I any- mean, I was waiting <laughs> for you, and you're just like dumbfounded. Oh, I mean, <laughs> I, was, I was. I mean, I, I thought I was, the game yeah. was fun. It was kind of, kind of boring though. At the same time, like nothing really happened, and that's why I said the whole time, like Michigan can bore people, and that that's not like a problem. I don't have a problem with it, but I just kind yeah. of sat there watching the game. To the like, general mm-hmm. public, if you looked on social media, it was obviously a problem. Yeah, some people were saying like this was the worst national championship in a long time. Like people weren't saying that when Alabama was winning this way, right? Like when they beat LSU nine to six or whatever it was, mm-hmm. in in that national championship when they rematched from the regular season, I don't think anybody said Alabama was a bad national champion. Right. It's just that the game has changed so much, mm-hmm. and offense has led the way. Yeah. And there have been like high level quarterbacks putting up insane numbers. Seeing a team win like this is out of the ordinary. Right. In today's game, it was no problem when Georgia blew out TCU. Right. But they they put up a lot of points though. I guess so. Yeah, when you put up a lot of points, it's respectable. Yeah, but when you when you play this style in today's game and you're not an SEC team, mm-hmm. <laughs> you don't have a ton of five stars that look like absolute freaks. Even though Michigan has freaks, yeah, especially on defense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it it rubs people the wrong way. 
that mixed with the quote unquote cheating stuff. Yeah. But yeah, the, those two big plays from Donovan Edwards were incredible. Yeah, I, I thought it was crazy because I hadn't seen him all season, it felt like. Yeah. And his two first two plays, both touchdowns. So he stepped up in the big moment, which was cool to see. Yeah, Washington's adjustments with the short passing game and the way they uh, kind of shut down the run game in the third quarter, mm-hmm. I think they did a good job, but they just couldn't get over that hump. Yeah. Like that that missed deep ball to Roma Dunze was huge. Yeah. Uh, that pick to come out in the second half to Will Johnson was big. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Michigan just – they kept letting Washington hang around and Washington could never yeah. take advantage. They would march down the field and then they just couldn't punch it in, it felt, felt like, a few times. Um, kind of on both sides, to be honest. But, um, yeah, it was it was crazy. And, uh, obviously, a lot of people around here were super happy about it. I saw it all over social media. Um, if you go anywhere else in the national media, they kind of played it off. But watching Paul Feinbaum have to admit <laughs> that Michigan is the best and just completely change his tune warmed my heart. A guy like it Kirk Herbstreet on the call. Yeah, honestly, Kirk has never like shown extra hate to Michigan. I've never yeah. had a major problem with Kirk. Hmm. But it's it's the guys like Paul where Jim Harbaugh was always overrated and not that good. Yeah, Michigan was never going to beat Ohio State or get over the hump. Mm-hmm. And then they did it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was a doubter. I didn't think I was at a point where I thought Jim Harbaugh probably should go. After 2020, (laughs) like 80% of people at least Mm -hmm. had said Jim should probably go. Yeah. But hey, they stuck it out. They got it all to work. Crazy things happen. Yeah. But uh, college football was down this year. That's why. Don't worry about it. (laughs) Also, I want to say to all the people that complained about the holding calls. Oh, yeah. If it happened to your team, you wouldn't be complaining. Refing has been terrible for a long time, and it's worse than it's ever been. It happened to go Michigan Michigan's way at some points in that game, mm-hmm. and I don't care. Yeah, I was gonna I say I don't care if it was your team, you wouldn't care either. I feel like that happens a lot, like holding calls. This is, this is a every game thing in football nowadays. Mm-hmm. Holding calls, you can call holding on, on almost every other play. Yeah, you can. Yeah, and that's it usually, just happened to swing Michigan's way a few times. It's usually what people turn to when they lose. And, uh, yeah. I, I mean, I've been faulty of it at times when the Lions lose and things like that, but it happens It happens all the time. So, I don't know. Yeah, is there anything else you want to say about this glorious season? No matter how tough things get after this, I – these memories, I mean, they might last forever. <laughs> like, I, I don't know if I'll ever see Michigan do this again. Mm-hmm. Like, this, there's so much luck and so much that has to come together for a season like this to happen that it, it's it's hard to imagine it happen multiple times unless you're like Alabama where you constantly build the highest level of talent over and over and over again and you have a certain, like, level of discipline in your program. That's the only time stuff like this happens. Nick yeah. Saban did it, has done it like six times, and that never happens. There's a reason why he's the greatest in college history. Mm-hmm. But it, it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Kirby and- Smart and Jim Harbaugh, I, I was just about to completely say something wrong. Kirby Smart has two national championships at this point. Not one. Mm. But Michigan has one, and that's all that matters. Yeah. And we know you'll, do it. you'll at least be able to hold on for at least another 16 years, right? Why 16? Because that, that's the difference between 2023 and 1997. See, I, did, I didn't even take right? that into account, honestly. <laughs> Am I wrong? No, I'm definitely wrong. I'm just dumb. <laughs> this is not I a, can't do math. Listen, we math doesn't matter on this, this podcast, is, okay? We know percentages yeah. and, yeah, the stuff that matters. In, it's in okay. I was, I was watching a sports pro- podcast the other night, too, and uh, they, like, we're talking about days of the week or something. They're like, well, how many days are in the year? And somebody was like, 367. So, you know, <laughs> I'm not the only one. Again, I'm uh, I'm totally out of it this week because I just have – my brain is on the lines right now, and it's crazy. Um, but we go from Michigan national title to Michigan college hoops. Let's talk about some terrible basketball. Oh, Let's talk boy. about the, the spectrum 
uh, in Michigan sports exactly where yeah one has to sacrifice themselves for the other to exist. Mm-hmm. Listen, Rich Rod, Brady Hoke, a bunch of disappointing, terrible football, and Denard Robinson saving the day. Yeah, John Beeline. 26 years. I being like, so dumb. <laughs> at that same time, you had John Beeline being simultaneously one of the top five coaches, and he was known as the cleanest coach in college basketball. Mm-hmm. He didn't recruit like the highest of the high-level players, but he recruited players that made sense for him, and he got the best out of every single one of them. Yep. Then we got Nick Stauskas to be a lottery pick. Yes, he did. <laughs> Nick Stauskas was really good in college. He, he I'm was. not gonna. I'm yeah, not trying I to. I thought bash he was gonna be good. It's yeah. unfortunate. But yeah, now for Michigan football <laughs> to prosper mm-hmm. and reach the highest level, Michigan basketball can be good. Yeah. It's like the Lions and the Pistons. We sacrificed the Pistons. And Michigan for the Lions. basketball sucks. They're <laughs> yeah, terrible. It's, it's really bad. Their body language is terrible. The coaching looks terrible. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it, it's just it's not good. It's not good. They have stretches where they look pretty good and then they look terrible. I I don't I don't even want to I don't want to go into like major detail like they can't defend mm-hmm. like Jawan Howard can't teach his big men how to defend in the post. A few players are doing their best on offense to keep them alive, but it's not enough. They're just bad. Yeah. Do you think? I mean, we kind of talked about it before, but do you think now like Jawan should be fired before the end of the season? I don't think it's gonna happen, but okay, I think it should happen. I want Phil Martelli to fe- to finish the year as the head coach. Hmm. Yeah, Jawan Howard let Phil Martelli coach the game they played. <laughs> yeah, in Philadelphia at the Palestra where he used to coach. Yeah, when he coached St. Joe's, and that was kind of weird. But it was, it was a nice gesture. But who does that? Right. Who says? Oh yeah, you can you can coach tonight's like, game. It, it it seems like a mess where there are too many cooks in the kitchen and nobody can figure out who does what. Yeah. And why why are we doing this? Mm-hmm. What is this program? What is our identity? What 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 is this? Yeah, there are no answers to that question with Michigan basketball right now. Those questions, mm-hmm. they're just a bunch of question marks. Yeah, and they're on it's, a four yeah. they're on a four game losing streak. Four game skid. You lost to McNeese, who was the better team, mm-hmm. and coached by Will Wade, who's a better coach than Jawan Howard. Yep. Who do they lose to? In Philadelphia, I can't even remember who they played in that game. Uh, was that Minnesota, or was that Penn no. State? That was that was Penn State. Penn State was on yeah. Sunday. Yeah, they lost to Penn State. They were up by like thirteen <laughs> at the end of the first half, and they blew the lead in Juwan Howard fashion. Penn State uh, scored fifty-two in the second half. Yeah, how many Michigan score in the second half? Thirty-six. <laughs> I'm not watching them for the rest of the season. They're not worth it. They're an embarrassment. Uh, they suck. Yeah, and they don't deserve our time. They don't. And uh, just to make you feel better about not watching, they're gonna go to Maryland uh, tomorrow, and then they got Ohio State, which Ohio State has been very impressive this year. Kind of a surprise to me. Um, then they're playing at Ill- or they're home for Ohio State and Illinois. Then they go to Purdue, then they play Iowa at home, and then they go to East Lansing. Good luck. That's a good time. Good luck. So that's that's a lot of fun. Then they play Rutgers, Wisconsin, Nebraska, Illinois, Michigan State. I hope Nebraska Purdue. beats them by thirty. The Big Ten. Oh, Nebraska beats them by fifty. They don't. They all of their opponents right now for the rest of the season are above five hundred. That's how good the Welcome Big Ten is Big right 10. now. The Big Ten is playing yeah. even better than I thought they would this season, and. uh it's brutal out there. And Michigan, yeah. they might be at the bottom. They might be. Which is crazy. That's crazy. They have no excuse. They have the talent to be a top five team in the league, honestly. Mm-hmm. And they just, they have nothing going for them. Yeah. Absolutely nothing. Yeah. It's unfortunate. So, yeah, congratulations, Michigan basketball. You're going to have to reset. You're the complete opposite of Michigan football. Yeah. Who who would have thought we would say that in the past decade? Mm -hmm. Incredible. Yeah. 
And then there's Michigan State basketball, who is not terrible. They're, they're sort of the opposite of their football team, where their football team's like okay at times, but not good. And then the basketball team's okay at times, but they're not great. So, like, they're still good, but nothing special. As um, long as you have Tyson Walker, you're in every game. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much what this season is so far. Yeah. As long as he's playing and he's healthy and at, like, at least two guys can score in double digits besides him, they have a chance in almost every game. Yeah. But the problem is, like, the last few years is they don't have a set-in-stone number two guy. They don't have a set-in-stone number three guy. So how can you trust the team night in and night out when you don't know what's going to happen? Like I was saying before the podcast, Malik Hall had like back-to-back 20-plus -back point games, and then when they played Northwestern, he had 25 minutes, zero points, zero assists, zero rebounds, one foul. He got one foul. That's his only stat of the game. How many shot attempts? Oh, he did get two turnovers. Four. He shot the ball four times. Hmm. Like, come on. Yeah. That is the perfect example of Malik Hall, the Malik Hall experience. It's just, uh, it's disappointing. That's for sure. The two college basketball teams that we've known and loved around here that have been consistently making tournaments and stuff until last year. Um, they're just disappointing, and they're no fun. How are the Golden Grizzlies doing, Malik? They're okay, but I still, I, I'm not going to go off. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. You're trying to bait me, Joey. <laughs> Maybe. Oakland is okay right now. Yeah. And that's as far as I will take it. <laughs> I don't want to express my frustrations. It's fair. And go super controversial. Yet. <laughs> we there's a, There's a lot of season left. Yeah. I think Oakland is nine and six. Let me check really quick. Yeah, they're they're five hundred. They're like third in the horizon, I think. Yeah. All I all I will say right now is I'm not a fan of uh ninety nine percent of Greg Campy's coaching decisions. Most of them make zero sense. Yeah. But they're still talented enough to win some games. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. They're nine and eight right now. Mm hmm. Yeah, Trey Townsend is coming off a big game, 28 and 11. Yeah. Uh, Blake Lantman has had a good stretch of shooting in the past three or four games. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they're fourth in the conference right now mm -hmm. behind Cleveland State, Green Bay, and Purdue Fort Wayne. Okay. Well, let's go over some so, of the top 25 in uh, college basketball. It's been a minute since we've done that. Um, again, once football season's over, we have college football's over. So now we can include a little more college basketball as we're starting to get closer and closer to March Madness, as crazy as that sounds. But uh, number one, still Purdue, 14-1. Houston is number two. They're going to fall. They just lost to Iowa State in kind of an ugly match. Uh, you didn't mention Purdue lost, too. Oh, yeah, that's right. They did lose. Purdue just got upset by 13-3 and Nebraska. Yeah, I forgot Yeah, all the, the crazy games lately. Um, so Kansas will most likely go back to number one. Um, and then we got UConn that's there and Tennessee, Kentucky, uh, North Carolina, Arizona, Oklahoma, Illinois, Marquette, Duke, Memphis, Baylor, Wisconsin, Auburn, Colorado State, BYU, both falling though. Uh, San Diego State, those Aztecs that you always talk about moving up. Utah State, a team that I always like moving up. Uh, Clemson, Creighton, Gonzaga, FAU is falling off the map, in my opinion. And then there's Texas. Any team you want to mention that's uh, either a surprise or a disappointment? It shouldn't be a surprise, but I'm surprised about Wisconsin being this good right now. Mm -hmm. When they got A.J. Store, the transfer from St. John's, who was like a borderline four-star player, mm -hmm. I mean five-star, I didn't understand why he went to Wisconsin. To me, what he did didn't really fit Wisconsin, but he's fit right in. Like, they they needed his scoring. Yeah. They needed his level of talent to fit into what they do. Mm -hmm. Playing just, like, smart, sound basketball. Getting wide open shots for three good post games. Like, Wisconsin is pretty good. Not that fun to watch to me, but mm. pretty good. 
Uh, shouts out to San Diego State. Thank you for bringing up my Aztecs. <laughs> yeah. I think Kansas might be the best team in the country. Mm. They played a really close one at TCU at home over the weekend. Yeah. But they always seem to, like, figure out a way to win in the end. Right. And they just have – they've got a lot of firepower. Mm-hmm. They do play I Oklahoma like on what was that Friday? Yeah, yeah, on Friday. So that'll be a big matchup for them too. But uh, should be fun. I think people should not sleep on Duke. I think they're starting to figure out what type of team they are. Mm-hmm. Their true freshman five-star guard Jared McCain is one of the best shooters in the country right now. He's shooting like 40% from three and taking like four threes a game. That's really good for a true freshman in today's game. Yeah. And Kyle Filipowski, I think I think he just came off of like a 30 and 12 game. Mm-hmm. They absolutely blew out Pittsburgh. Yeah. So they've got a really good mix of veterans and like young guys that are really, they're starting to gel right now. Right. They're starting to look like a classic Duke team. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I really enjoy watching them play. And uh, I really enjoy Clemson. Okay. I like PJ Hall a lot. They're starting big man. They got Joe Girard transfer from Syracuse. He's a sharpshooter. Mm-hmm. And I think Tyson Hunter is one of the most underrated. He might be the most underrated guard in college basketball. He is like a trustworthy guy in clutch moments. He can shoot it. He can take it to the hole. He plays hard. I, I really like him. And I like the what Clemson has put together. Okay, They're an underrated team. Okay. Even though they were like top ten last week and they right. yeah, lost a game, but I still think people just don't pay attention to Clemson basketball. Yeah. And they, they are they're building like a pretty good program. Yeah. I, I mean it makes sense though. Like they're as far as like ACC basketball goes, you don't really think of Clemson typically. Yeah. Because there's so many other teams that, you know, take the spotlight from them. But um yeah, I'm gonna put this in my in my bank in my head. So I can uh, go back to it when we're doing March Madness research because I'm again I'm still slowly ramping up my college basketball stuff. Yeah. Also, uh, just a few more things. Go uh, for it. I want to give you a. I'll do this once a week. I'll give you a player to watch out for. Okay. This kid right here is one of my favorite players in college basketball. He's not playing as great as I hoped he would, but he's still one of the better point guards in the mid major. Mm-hmm. Uh, level of college basketball. He's a really, a uh, really high level shooter. He can pass it. He's tough and he's clutch. Aiden Mahaney at St. Mary's. Okay. Yeah, he had a great freshman season last year for St. Mary's. He was their starting point guard. I feel like I remember the name. Yeah, he helped lead an upset of Gonzaga at home. Mm-hmm. And he's only shooting thirty seven percent from the field, only thirty one percent from three. Last year he was a forty percent three point shooter. Okay. And I've still seen moments where he, like, gets on hot streaks and shoots the lights out. But, mm-hmm. yeah, it's kind of struggling from shooting. Aiden Mahaney is a really good player you should check out. Okay. And lastly, Nebraska is my team for the rest of the year. They're 13-3. and three. Yep. Kase Tomanaga might be the best shooter in the country. Mm-hmm. It doesn't take much for him to get going, and he hits difficult shots. He makes it look easy. Yeah. Go Cornhuskers. Michigan sucks. They're the type of team that's going to be a tough out in tournament play. If they keep this up. Yeah. I hope this isn't just like a, a this stretch. is the best start they've had in a very long time. Yeah. And like, we, and it looks like they could keep it up. Right. And like we talked about, they're about to, everybody's hitting the big 10 schedule. So big 10 is going to slice and dice through each other. So we'll, we'll see who comes out on top after the fact, but right now they're looking really good. Um. All right. I want to jump over to the NBA really quick before we get into NFL playoff talk. Um, the interesting thing in the NBA, there's been a lot of injuries. Uh, Tyrese Halliburton went down. I don't know what his status is at the moment, um, but it didn't look too, too good. Um, John Morant is out for the season. His season is over. That was such sad news. Yeah. Right after it basically just started. He was, he was like getting right back into what he was as a player. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden that news just broke. Yeah. Um, and then for our lowly Pistons, the only player we have, Cade Cunningham, down. The guy that's coming off of having the best stretch of his career. Yeah. He's starting to play like an all-star. And he's going to be reevaluated in a week. Yeah. 
So Which means luckily it's not like too bad. Yeah. He can still come back. But but yeah. It's not a good look. Um again, we're like a month away from the trade deadline, so hopefully things start to to heat up there. Um Eric Spolstra got an extension for $120 million. And uh, the Heat are going to have him, what, another eight years, I believe? So, good for him. He's now going to be, like, one of the longest tenured coaches in the same place. Um, So, that's pretty cool. And then, uh, what did you say? Kawhi Leonard just got an extension. He got an extension for three years, 153. Jeez. So, they're assuming he can stay healthy for the next three years. Clippers are still all in. I mean, what else can they be at this point? There's no going back. Yeah. There is no going back. Yeah, I guess so. I don't know. It's this is it's a lot though. Mm-hmm. Three years one fifty three. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's crazy. Um and then like the standings haven't really changed too much. Uh the Eastern Conference I will say New York's been winning since the OG They are undefeated since trade. they traded for OG and OB. Uh I didn't expect that to happen. And OG just had his best game as a Nick. So I don't know if it's, you know, just luck or what or if it's actually yeah. working. They're but just, they're just playing good basketball, honestly. Yeah. But I was yeah. I was surprised by that. And then the West is kind of still crazy with Minnesota and OKC one and two. Um but it's cool to see. Either way. Pistons, hope you can win another game. Hey, tonight is the game of the year. I don't know. The one for all the marbles. So they're playing the Spurs. Yeah. And everybody's Even though Kate is out. talking about it's the bottom bottom of the barrel bowl. But uh, I don't know. Victor's been playing really well lately. And I don't think we can defend him. I just don't. Definitely not. So. Yeah. Like, we already have a big man problem. Like, Jalen Dern is the, kind of the only good big man that we have. So, yeah. I, I'm nervous if if jeremy sohan doesn't try to make it his offense yeah like it seems like he's trying to do a lot of times Mm -hmm. victor should keep putting up these good numbers yeah and he's still doing it on a minutes restriction Mm -hmm. like he's playing 25 26 minutes a game yeah it's he's he's something else it's gross all right move to the big uh the meat and potatoes of today's podcast in my opinion which speaking of which for our ontv Food drive. We did our cooking shows, and yesterday Marie and I made steak and potatoes. Nice. So power couple of on TV going with uh, staying on brand for myself with meat and potatoes. Um, since we're into the playoffs, a lot of the the coaching revolving door has uh, begun. I think we talked about Arthur Smith being fired. We know Brandon Staley has been fired. Hurrah! Um, but some big surprises have come out in the last couple of days. Uh, Mike Vrabel was fired yesterday from the Tennessee Titans after having a winning record and uh, going to the playoffs twice, I believe. And now today, Pete Carroll is out as a Seahawks coach. And apparently he's being moved into some advisory role. Maybe they'll put him into a front office position. I don't know all the details just yet. But uh, what do you think about some of these coaching changes? Especially like Vrabel and uh, Pete Carroll. Yeah. Arthur, everybody wanted Arthur Smith gone, so mm-hmm. nobody's sad about that one. Right. Uh, Mike Vrabel, I'm actually not surprised. Mm-hmm. And that is because I believe being stuck in the middle is worse than tanking. Yeah. You're stuck in the middle. You can't get a top draft pick. Mm-hmm. You're not winning enough. Their brand of football isn't that entertaining outside of King Henry. So the fans aren't really enjoying it. And his contract is up. So he, I mean, he basically said goodbye to the fans, so. Yeah, like there, there was no really like level of in ever since they got upset by Cincinnati in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Was that two years ago? Uh, yeah, I believe so. When they were the number one seed. Yeah. yeah. Ever since that upset, nothing has looked good to. There's a reason why I've always said I can't trust the Titans. Yeah. And that organization isn't very serious. Mm-hmm. This could be a serious move, depending on who they go get next. Yeah. And what direction they go in as a team, mm-hmm. because losing Derrick Henry means you got to shift. Just like the rest of the league has shifted, there's no more yeah, 25, 30 carry games mm-hmm. where you lean on this one guy that gets you some wins. Is Will Levis the future? Who knows? But I don't think the Titans have ever had like a high-level passing offense. 
Like, even the year Ryan Tannehill was yeah. like a borderline MVP candidate. Mm-hmm. Even with the, A.J. They, Brown. They were the number one seed. Yeah, yeah with A.J. Brown. It was like, like A.J. Brown is dangerous. Mm-hmm. Ryan Tannehill is like a good, safe quarterback. And and then there's King Henry. Yeah. That's basically what it was. Mm-hmm. And then before that, it was basically like they had some down years. And then before that was when they were good with C.J. 2K. And yeah. they ran the ball. You got some Jake Locker in there. They had some DeMarco Murray time. Yeah. So, yeah, they've been a running team, basically. Then. So, yeah, it, is, it might be time for them to shit. And Tajay Spears... The running back they drafted from Tulane mm-hmm. is the type of running back where you split him out, yep. have him catch some passes out of the backfield. You get really creative. Mm-hmm. And he had a good season for them, ultimately. So, yeah, I, I'm i really interested in seeing the type of coach they hire next mm-hmm. because I hope it's like a, a really good offensive mind. They're gonna, I'm sure they're going to call Ben Johnson. but Yeah, everybody's going to. Yeah. Now, after Mike Vrabel. Pete Carroll, two seasons ago, I thought his career was dead. Mm-hmm. I thought the Seahawks were dead. And they were starting Geno Smith. And nobody thought that was going to go well. Mm-hmm. Geno Smith had a career resurgence. The Seahawks didn't look like the Legion of Boom era Seahawks, but they look respectable again. After, like, completely falling off defensively and just having Russ save them. Right. <clears throat> It looks like they're kind of back to not figuring out what they're going to be again. Mm-hmm. Even with DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett on the back end of his career and Jackson Smith and Jigba, you've made good draft picks. You've got one of the best young corners in the game in mm-hmm. Tariq Woolen. Mm-hmm. And they still just were a middle-of-the-road team. Some weeks they were well, exciting. They, some weeks you they just weren't that good. They also hit with uh, Devin Witherspoon. That too. And he got hurt. But, but. Yeah, all that young, exciting talent. Mm-hmm. And like I said, what did it amount to? Yeah. Nothing special, really. Yeah. And even with the yeah, Geno Smith had some games where he was out. Mm-hmm. But with all that talent, you expect a little bit more than what they got. Yeah. With a very outside shot in week 18 to make the playoffs. Yeah. So it is shocking that this news came out the way it did. Mm-hmm. But. They were gonna. They were gonna need a new face and a new voice yeah. soon. Now, did we expect it to be like right now? Probably not, but it was coming. Mm-hmm. I called it too early. Yeah, <laughs> it came now. So they also, I assume they're gonna go for somebody with a offensive that leans more offense. I was gonna say with all the weapons they have, Ben Johnson would be terrifying in Seattle. Oh man, the, the stuff they could pull off. And they already yeah. announced we're playing Seattle again next year. So. Yeah. That might be, become like a little rivalry or something. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it's a shock in the way it broke in the moment, but it's not surprising seeing that it was coming soon. Yeah. He wasn't going to be around for too much longer. Mm-hmm. Um, another one that I kind of forgot that it doesn't really matter, um, Ron Rivera, another one out as the commander's head coach, well-respected in the NFL, just, you know, didn't get it done. Um but I think the more important one that came out, I think this morning or yesterday, uh, looks like Matt Eberflus is going to stay in Chicago. They fired their offensive coordinator. And uh, so that almost kind of leans towards them keeping Justin Fields. That's what I, I'm pretty sure they're doing at this point. Which is interesting. Yeah. Um, I like it, personally. I thought they should keep Justin Fields and go for like Marvin Harrison and just shoot for the moon. Um but it's it's definitely interesting, I think. And it's going to make the draft really interesting, which is exciting for viewers like me. But, um, yeah. So And the the Bears officially have the first pick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Don't, they, don't they have two top ten picks? Um, I don't know where the other one landed because they got some okay. wins late in the season. Uh, one team has two top tens. I think, I think it was. I mean, they probably do. Yeah, it was like one in five or one in four or something. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, it's very interesting. Um, wait, I can look real quick, actually, because one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They have the 10th pick, exactly, okay. so that's why. All right. Okay. Um, but, yeah. So, this weekend, they call it Super Wild Card Weekend or whatever. It's just Wild Card Weekend. Um, we have um, how many games? Five? Six? Jeez. Again, math, not my strong suit right now. Um, six games, 
two on Saturday, three on Sunday, and one on Monday. The Saturday games, we have the Browns taking on the Texans, which the Texans beat the Colts, and the Jaguars lost. So the Texans won the AFC South, which was pretty crazy. And they're going to play the Joe Flacco Browns on Saturday at 4.30. Who do you think is winning this game? I'm taking the Browns. Okay. I think that's kind of the consensus for a lot of people is that they think the Browns are just um, the hot team right now. The Browns did beat uh, the Texans a couple weeks back, but um, C.J. Stroud was out of that game. I'm actually, as much as I love Joe Flacco, I'm already starting to lean towards the Texans possibly being able to do this, even though everybody's on the Browns. But Texans are at home. D'Amico Ryans is fired up. C.J. Stroud is back playing great. Nico Collins has been torching teams uh, lately. So I think this could be a fun matchup, and I, I think it could be a little bit closer than um, I think what people are thinking. I, I think if you get pressure on Joe Flacco, mm-hmm. there's only like one or two ways it's going. Yeah. Like he hasn't taken many big hits, mm-hmm. or I don't know if he's taken any big hits since he's got come back. <laughs> right. He hasn't been made uncomfortable in many situations. Like they've yeah. perfectly tailored the offense to him. Mm-hmm. If you get pressure on him, bad things could happen. Yeah. And I think the Texans' defense is, like, sneaky. They're not as bad as people thought they might be. Uh, the Saturday night game, we got Dolphins-Chiefs. Chiefs. On on America's Network. Yeah. Peacock. Peacock. Exclusively streaming, by the way. Uh, the Dolphins faltering late in the season, losing to the Bills in Week 18 to lose the division, get the sixth seed. And the Chiefs stumbled their way into winning their division. Um a lot of people don't know how to call this game. I don't really know how to call this game. A lot of people are just giving the Chiefs the advantage for the for having home field. But uh, where do you think you lean in this game? Um, let me see. Dolphins have been first, bad on the road. First of all, I just want to say it, it is an absolute travesty that this game is on Peacock. I, I hate I hate this with everything yeah. in my body. And this is one of the storyline games. Well, Browns Texans is it's the Deshaun Watson Bowl. Um, Dolphins Chiefs is the Tyreek Hill Bowl. So, uh, yeah. I'm going Dolphins. Okay. I think Patrick Mahomes does not have more than one receiver that he truly, truly um, depends in, depends on. Mm-hmm. And, like, is a go-to target. Like, is, Ra- is Rushy Rice their best receiver going into the playoffs? Yeah. Is that a good thing? I don't know. He's a rookie. So that's a little nerve-wracking. Definitely. And Travis Kelsey has been in Taylor Swift mode for most of the season. Yeah, he's been. So I mean, he, he hasn't been dominant. He's been really good for a tight end, but he hasn't been Travis Kelsey good. So that is a discrepancy there. I think I would like I would like the Dolphins to win. Uh, I think it would be more exciting to see them move on. I think the Chiefs, if they move on, yes, they have the Patrick Mahomes effect and like people love the Chiefs. But it's just not their year. Like, they just don't look exciting. They, they're they not fun to watch, in my opinion, even. So I would rather have the Dolphins win. So I'm kind of hoping that way. But I can definitely see the Chiefs winning it because it's at Arrowhead, and that's just a huge advantage. Isaiah Pacheco could have a huge game against the Dolphins, I think. So, yeah. I, I think they need a big game out of Isaiah Pacheco. Yeah. They need somebody that can keep the chains moving so Patrick Mahomes doesn't have to make magic every mm-hmm. single time he touches the ball. Yeah. Um. Also, the Dolphins are going in pretty injured. I don't know about Jalen Waddle's status, but he's missed the last two games. Uh, Tyreek Hill keeps getting banged up in each game. Raheem Mostert, also a little banged up. They lost a couple defensive players, um, so they ended up signing James Houston and Bruce Irvin, combined 100 years old. (laughs) That's not true, but... um, James Houston being like 23 and Bruce Irvin being like 75. Yeah. Um, So, who knows what if they'll make an impact right away or not. But I'm going to lean with my heart here and hope that the Dolphins win. Then on Sunday, those pesky Steelers. How do they keep doing it? They're the seventh seed. They're playing the Bills. Can I be honest with you? Yeah. I didn't even realize the Steelers made the playoffs. Yeah. That just kind of annoyed me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah, they won their last uh, regular season game, which is all they needed to do. And uh, they got some help, obviously, from the Jaguars losing, which was huge for a lot of teams. 
Um, we can talk about the Jaguars in the offseason because they might have some problems. Disgusting. But uh, do you think the Bills just run away with this game, or do you think the Steelers sneak their way in the way they always I do? I think the Steelers keep it close for almost three quarters because Josh Allen can't stop making mistakes. Yeah. Is Josh Allen the most frustrating quarterback in the league? He's up there. He's <laughs> definitely up there. He's he's like he's a few mistakes and some shades away from Jameis Winston. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> and then like some passes that he throws are just like crazy. Some plays he makes are it's, insane. That deep ball he threw into the back of the end zone they got picked against Miami mm-hmm. that had literally like zero chance. <laughs> He just he just does stuff. Yeah, he like sometimes it's cool. It's almost like he forgets he where he's at. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm going with the Bills so in this one. Uh, a really fun matchup, I think. Uh, 4:30 p.m. game, Packers at the Cowboys. Packers are kind of the young hotness. They're the youngest team in the league, I believe, is what I heard. And uh, Cowboys riding high from Brad Allen, but um, I don't know. I think the Packers have the chance in this game. I don't know if I think they're gonna win but i think they have a chance where do you uh fall on that game i wish the packers were just a few years older and had a little bit more experience yeah to it be would, able to do it it would make my day if they upset the cowboys in this one and jordan love just looks like the superior quarterback mm-hmm. but I, I just i don't see a scenario yeah where micah parsons just lets jordan love sit back there freely mm-hmm. and joe barry yeah. Like, you, you can't win playoff games with Joe Barry. <laughs> that, that's not a thing. Yeah. So, yeah, they, they got to try and have, a like, close to flawless offensive game plan mm-hmm. for them to even have a chance. Yeah. I will say the one thing that's going in the Packers' favor right now is Aaron Jones is kind of looking like vintage Aaron Jones uh, lately. He's had back-to-back 100-yard games um, just running the ball. So, maybe they can just kind of slow it down, do some trick plays with Jaden Reed. I don't know. I think uh, Matt LaFleur might uh, throw some stuff at him. Mike McCarthy's been losing all these coaching battles. So, yeah, I don't know. Again, I would love for the Packers to win. Don't think they're really going to, but uh, it would be cool to see. All right, we're going to skip to the Monday night game, of course. Eagles and Bucks. Eagles lost to the Giants and Tyrod Taylor in Week 18. Do you think that matters, or are they going to bounce back and beat the Bucks on Monday night? The Eagles have lost five out of their last six. Yeah, I believe so. Something like that. Uh, Their defense is terrible. They look like they don't know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Their D-line can't get pressure. Yep. Uh, With all those Georgia draft picks, you'd expect something would have happened, Mm -hmm. but nothing has. You know what did happen? What? Matt Patricia. (laughs) Matt Patricia happened. That also happened. Uh, They just, they made James Conner look like a god. And Kyler Murray looked like he was like five inches taller. Yeah. It was easy for them. They were on easy mode, Mm -hmm. just hitting passes and running the ball and doing whatever they wanted. It's, it's, it, it make, it kind of makes me sad (laughs) because I, I I wanted the Eagles to win the Super Bowl last year. Mm -hmm. They started 10 and one. Yeah. I wanted them to win their division Mm -hmm. and everything has just gone downhill. Big Jalen Hurts fan. Jalen Hurts has regressed. I don't know if it just it's just because Shane Steichen is gone, mm-hmm. but just the play calling, like you you can watch that video when they played the Cardinals, you can watch that video of them running a Jalen Hurts QB run, mm-hmm. like a weak screen pass, and then another QB run from like third and fifteen, and the fans just screaming at the top of their lungs <laughs> like, "What are we doing?" Yeah, nobody knows what the Eagles are doing. I don't know if they know. Mm-hmm. And it's it's just bad. Yeah, they look unmotivated. Yeah. With that being said, I'm taking the Bucks. You're taking the Bucks? Yes. Okay. I I have no belief in them getting it together. Yeah. To me, it, they seem like they're too far gone. Yeah. And with their defense struggling, Chris Godwin and Mike Evans finished the season pretty good. And if anybody wants to prove anything, I think it would be Baker Mayfield. Look at what Baker did to a a bad defense in Lambeau a few weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Had almost a perfect game. Yeah. Put up big numbers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This could be a, it could actually be a fun game because the Eagles are struggling. Yeah. Um, All right. Sunday night football, Rams and Lions. This is literally why 
I cannot sleep at night. It's everything. This is why it, it's only Wednesday, and it feels like it should be Saturday. I'm ready to watch football. And then on Sunday, we have to wait all day on Sunday till Sunday night. Mike Tarico, Chris Collinsworth on the call. Jared Goff versus Matthew Stafford. Sean McVay versus Jared Goff. First home playoff game at Ford Field. There is so much Listen, on the line. The script writers went crazy on this one. They did. They they drew they drew up some heat. Mm-hmm. How do you predict this game going? Try to think with your head because you know we're Lions all in right now. But Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua are problems. Mm-hmm. Kyron Williams has gotten better as the season has gone on. They got to get pressure. Yeah, the Lions have to get constant pressure on Matthew Stafford. Lions fans know firsthand what happens when you get uh, pressure in Matthew Stafford's face. Mm-hmm. And this isn't 2011 where he can chuck it 60 yards and Calvin will be just be there. Right. He's got to teach. Mm-hmm. Wait, who am I talking with? I was, I was going to reference a coach. I, I kind of lost where I was going. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. Like, they, they've got to get after him. And they they got to make him uncomfortable all game long. And you know who's had five sacks in the last two games? Hutch. Hutch. Heating up at the right time. Yeah. They got to do some stunts. Mm-hmm. That'll get him open rushing lanes. Ali McNeil's healthy. Yep. He's got to get back there. C.J. Gardner-Johnson And C.J. Gardner-Johnson has to play the best game mm-hmm. that he can play. Yeah. Because, my God, Kendall Vildor. Yeah. And Cam Sutton falling asleep. Yeah, it was rough. It's rough. You can't let Cooper and Puka just run wild. Mm-hmm. You can't. I would say, so like my thoughts have been, I would rather Cooper Cup get his than Puka Nakua. Because Puka I think, Nakua is more explosive. Right. Yeah. And that's my point. I would rather keep it underneath, let him dunk, dink and dunk to Cooper Cup. That's fine by me. Kyron Williams could care less about. I don't care. Everybody keeps talking about Kyron Williams, L.A. Rams running the ball like crazy. People keep forgetting the Lions are the number one running defense in the league overall. They did let Tony Pollard break enough runs to keep drives going when they played Dallas. But this isn't Dallas. This is not Dallas. This is at home. They have stopped so many running backs. This is the Lions' first home playoff game since 1993. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, Kyron Williams should be a zero. Yeah. Should be. The crowd is going to go crazy. Um, and I just think the Lions are going to be fired up. Sam Laporta, that stinks. Yeah. I'm almost starting to lean on the side. Let's just sit him, leave him for a week, let him fully rest so he's ready for the second round. I'm looking ahead already. Not to take away from Sunday night, but I think we can win without him. As crazy as that sounds, as good of a rookie season he's had, I think we can ground and pound against the Rams and slow the pace down if we have to. I think Jared Goff's going to be on fire. I think he's ready. This is what he's been waiting for. Let me ask you a question. Okay. The way that defense looked against the Vikings, Mm -hmm. do you have some extra fear that Nick Mullins – can make it look easy and the DBs can just like lose track and lose focus like that. Even, even in this playoff atmosphere, which we, we assume everybody will be locked in Mm -hmm. and it was the last game of the season. Yeah. But you can't let Nick Marlins just like, I still don't understand letting him play like that. Yeah. And Ty Chandler broke some really nice runs. So part of my thought is like, okay, Nick Mullins had two basically 400-yard games against us. Four picks in the one, two in the other. We won both those games. Dak Prescott had a big game. CeeDee Lamb had a huge game. Technically, we won that game. Like, this is just how this team is operating. And it's frustrating, obviously, because you give up big plays, and big plays are terrifying. Um, But it just seems like that's their identity. And I keep saying to people, like, why are we so afraid of Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua when literally anybody else in the NFC that we play have elite wide receivers, no matter where we go? 
It doesn't matter. Like the AFC is the one conference that, okay, you could say some teams don't have elite receivers. But in the NFC, you have Tampa Bay, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin. You have Philadelphia, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith. You have the Rams. You have the Packers even, with Christian Watson possibly being healthy and Jaden Reed. Um, the Cowboys, CeeDee Lamb, Brandon Cooks, we got lit up by them. The Stinging 49ers have Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, and Christian McCaffrey. So, like, no matter where you go in the NFC, there are elite receivers. And technically, you could say the same about us. We have Amon Ross, St. Brown, Sam Laporta, unfortunately going to be hurt. But that's just the way it is. And that's the weakness of our team is the DBs. But we're really good against the run. And the other thing, in the Dallas game, it was a lower scoring affair, even though we gave up all those yards. My brother and I keep saying it's a bend, don't break kind of defense. Yeah. And I think that's you just have to lay into it, your identity and know that if you are able to set the pace, then we can just win. It's kind of like Michigan. Like if the Lions get ahead, I think they're good, fairly good at holding leads, even if the team uh, makes some comebacks and stuff. It feels like the Lions always step up, at least this year, when they've needed to. And so, yeah, I'm going to be concerned about the the wide receivers and losing big plays. But I think at the end of the day, if we make enough impact plays, if Hutchinson gets enough pressure, gets a couple sacks, if, like, we saw Jack Campbell come off the edge and get a sack last week. We've seen Ifatu Melifonwu get a sack off the edge. Like, we're scheming up different blitz packages that I think at the right time is working for our defense. And that's what makes me hopeful, I think, for the defense. And it's just kind of that that known quantity. Like, Puka Nakua is probably going to have a good game. Cooper Cup, I don't know. It depends on how we want to play it. Um, but, yeah, I'm just, I'm just going in with the fact knowing we're probably going to give up a couple big plays. But I think with Jameer Gibbs and David Montgomery – we're going to set the tone. And we're going to win in the trenches. The offensive line, fully healthy, going to be good. And, uh, yeah, like the Rams' defense is no better than ours. And and people don't bring that up, I don't think. Yeah, they have Aaron Donald. He's a world breaker. But their defense overall, they have young DBs as well. Um, they're not that great against the pass. So, realistically, this could be a big Jamison Williams game for all we know especially with Sam Laporte out. He'll probably get some more targets. So I don't know why national media still just doesn't believe in, in the Lions. Um, I mean, I guess I get it. It's just the franchise as a whole. You take uh, history into account. The Rams have Matthew Stafford, who's won a Super Bowl, blah, blah, blah. They're kind of the hot team right now. But I think people forget how good the Lions are, especially at home. Again, they're at home, they're in prime time, and their offensive line is healthy. Those three things have been huge for them all season. So, yeah. I'm I'm gaining confidence as the week goes on. Final score prediction. Um, I do think it's going to be a little bit high scoring. I know the over under is like 51 and a half or something. Um I would say it's probably something along the lines of like 38-30. And if it's not that, I could definitely see see it being like a 27-21 type game too. But yeah, I'm gonna go with 38-30. You know what's crazy? Fun high that. scoring. What? My predicted score is 37-30. Okay, that's before you said 38-30. Okay, so we're locked up here. Alrighty. Cool. In the same state of mind. Yeah, I just think the Lions are gonna get out ahead. I, I, my favorite thing too is if the Lions win the coin toss. I love their first drive potential. They've been so good on opening drives this season, especially if they get the ball. So. I'm excited for it. And then bring on the Cowboys. Bring on the Cowboys. All righty. That's it. Next week, we're going to recap the Lions win over the Rams. We're putting it into the universe. The Lions winning the playoff game. Michigan winning the night. What is, what is happening? What is this? I don't know. What universe are we in? We sac- pretty cool one. Apparently, we sacrificed all our basketball teams. They had a nice run. Yeah. They had a nice run. They did. But the times have changed. Yep. So, congratulations on your national title, Malik. Um, hopefully, you don't have to wait another 26 years. Hopefully not. For the next one. But uh, this has been Fuse from the Sidelines, and we'll see you guys next time. Everybody tune in for the NBA championship tonight, Pistons Birds. It's the
what we've all been waiting for. Game of the year.